students welcome back we are going to work on the validity analysis in this video in our last video we talked about the reliability analysis of the scale and we did the Kornbeck alpha test within this video we are going to work on the convergent validity and discriminant validity so for that I have a data set which has six scales in it I'm moving on to that data over here this is my data and you can see I have different scales over here. Each of the scale has four to five uh, items. If you look at my first scale, RQ, it has four items. Then I have another scale that is WR, it has three items and so on. So in order to conduct the divergent and convergent um, validity test, we need to calculate correlation of all the items with the other items so how do we do that let's jump into the analysis we'll click analyze go to correlate click on bivariate select all the items I've already selected all the items are here in my window of the variables I'll check the Pearson correlation I'll check one tail test and flag significant correlations that's all what I want within this test I'll click OK and it would give me this correlation table. It's a huge correlation table that I have over here. Now, there are three things that this table shows us. If you look at these three cells over here, Pearson correlation, which is here in this row, then it gives us the sig value, one tail sig value, which is here in this row. Then we have number of pairs that were analyzed. Now I had marked flag significant relationships. So, oops, my God, it's giving a lot of things here. Okay, now if you look at this table here, it's so huge. It has this correlation statics. Like if we have two statics here, correlation is significant at 0 0.01 level, one tailed, which is what I wanted and uh, most of my correlations are significant it is giving me these these values over here some of the correlations are not significant even though they are high but they are not significant so we would need to look into all of these values to in to be able to analyze these numbers clearly we need to copy paste this data into word which i've done here i pasted my work over here in this document and I removed all the zero zeros from there, the sig values, and also the number of observations so that I can analyze my data clearly. Now, uh, first step, we would analyze convergent validity. How do we analyze the convergent validity? We would highlight all the cells that include the correlations of items within one construct. So you can see this blue box here. It highlights all the items correlation within the scale RQ. So this box here shows the correlation of items within this one scale. Now the rule is that this correlation should be between 0.3 and 0.7. And that's when we would say, okay, this is good convergent validity. Now this, on these grounds, this scale is good. Like all the values of correlations are significant, you can see that. And at the same time, the correlation is between the range of 0.3 and 0.7. Now let's look at the scale WR. Now this is the orange box that I have here. Again, this condition is met. Moving on, this is this yellow box. The yellow box is for AEW and AEW also fulfills that requirement all significant correlations between 0.3 and 0.7. Now next scale is EWA. It has four items and all the four items are correlated to each other and correlations are quite good over here. You can see that it is like 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.53 and all are significant. This scale is also quite good. It has four items and again good significance. But this one has a little, little low convergent validity. Although it's meeting the criteria, the, the validity is, the, the correlation is above 0.3. Uh, 
but it's not as good as these two scales that we have over here. So overall, what we can report is that yes, all of our scales show a convergent validity because the correlation of all the items within the scale is within the range 0.3 and 0.7, which indicates that the scales have good convergent validity, statistically significant validity. All right, now let's move on to the divergent validity. Now, when you are analyzing divergent validity, you have to look into the column, columns and the rows below the box and on the right and left of the box. If I analyze, want to analyze the divergent validity or discriminant validity of my scale RQ, I would have to look into the rows that are on this side or the column that is beneath it. Now, if I look at all the values that I have here, they are somewhere below 0.3 or on 0.3, this is one value where I have a value above 0 0.3, 0 0.355, and this, the, the, the correlation is statistically significant. So this is a little problem that is kind of, you know, it's indicating that yes, uh, and within the cell, within the blue box, I have a correlation that is less than this value. So it kind of can say, we can say that, you know, the discriminant validity or the divergent validity is little suffered over here. We will note it and we will report that as well. Now, if I move on to this box, uh, this also has a little bit of problem. You can see we have 0.4 as a value here and a lot of values are above 0.3. So we have a little problem related to divergent validity over here as well. So you will look one by one into all the rows that we have for all the boxes and you will note down and you will report the values that are making problem. Generally, we don't have such problems when you have a bigger sample size, if you have a smaller sample size and if you have collected data from same kind of people, you might have such kind of a problem. So this is how we report the convergent and discriminant validity of this scale. This is a step that we need to take before we calculate the values for the scales, the latent scores for the scales. So this is all for this video. Thank you. We'll meet you in the next video.